plastic and it's charged by rubbing it. And so if I put it there and give it a little bit of charge, it sticks to the wall, not with glue, but because the plastic has not got enough electrons on it, the wall has got plenty, the plastic is positively charged, the wall is negatively charged, and so the two stick together. And now I can write on it. So, capacitance C, measured in farads. Capacitance C is defined as Q, divided by V. That's how you work out what the capacitance of a capacitor is. You put the quantity of charge that you've separated from the plates, measured in coulombs, and you divide it by the voltage which there is across the plates, measured in volts, and the answer comes out as C measured in farads. And remember, usually we're dealing with tiny little capacitances, so we have to remember microfarad. The mu in front of the F means micro, which means a millionth of a farad. So that's how you define, that's how you work out the capacitance of a capacitor. Now, looking at all these capacitors that we saw on my screen here, you can in fact connect them together just as with resistors you can connect them together. And if you think about resistors, you've probably learned that you can connect resistors in series, one after the other, or in parallel. Well, you can do exactly the same thing with capacitors. And there was one famous occasion 30 years ago, before BBS television existed, when it was just BBS radio, when the managing director of BBS radio was a man called Tinley Dorji, who had studied electronics in the United Kingdom. And the radio transmitter broke down because one of the capacitors in the transmitter had broken down, it had burnt, the insulation had burnt, and it was impossible for him to get a capacitor of the correct value. So, using his knowledge of electronics and his knowledge about capacitors in series and parallel, he was able to take five or six other capacitors and join them together in the right way to make one capacitor of the size that he needed, and that allowed Bhutan Radio to continue broadcasting. That was a practical application of capacitors in series and parallel. So remember, all this knowledge you're learning, learning isn't just something for passing exams. It's really helpful in many, many situations. So remember, physics is not only fun, physics is also very, very useful. However, let's go on and just talk about connecting a number of capacitors together. First of all, let's think about connecting them together in parallel. Okay, wire, wire, one capacitor, two capacitors, three capacitors. They're connected together in parallel and we're going to charge them up by a battery with a voltage V. So the voltage across each capacitor, because they're in parallel, the voltage across each capacitor is V. Let's call that capacitor C1, C2, and C3. Remember that C equals Q over V. That means if we remember our remembering triangle, Q, C, V, Q equals C, V, 
So if I want to know V, it'll be Q over C. If I want to know C, it'll be Q over V. Now, what we're thinking about is what single capacitor would have the same capacitance as those three in parallel? What single capacitor could I put there to have the same total capacitance as those three altogether? So, let's think of that single capacitor as having a capacitance C. What will the voltage across it be? It'll be V. So, C, the big capacitor, will equal Q over V. Now, Q equals CV, so the charge on that capacitor, Q1, equals C1V. The charge on this capacitor, Q2, equals C2V. The charge on that capacitor, Q3, equals c 3 V. So we're looking at the charge on each of those capacitors. Very useful. You know actually on a dry day, have you ever got out of a car or a taxi on a dry day and when you get out and touch the door handle, you get an electric shock. That again is separation of charges because when you slid off your seat, you carried some electrons with you off the seat and touch the car handle, they all go back to the car. Similarly, sometimes on a very dry day, if you comb your hair, especially if you've got thin hair like me, then it sort of sticks out like that due to electric forces. Electric forces can be a real nuisance, but here they're being rather helpful. Let us think about capacitors in series. Easy to draw. One capacitor, two capacitors, three capacitors, C1, C2, C3. That's their capacitance in farads or microfarads. And we've charged them all up using a battery. So the positive terminal positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And the amount of charge on there is plus Q minus Q. And since that's capacitor 3, Q3, Q3. And on here, now the interesting thing is the electrons have gone from there to there. So the charge on this is the same as the charge on that. So we've no need to say Q3. We can just say Q. So the charge on that is plus Q, minus Q, plus Q, minus Q. I repeat, the charge on each capacitor is the same because the electrons have just gone from one to the other, from one to the other, from one to the other. In parallel, the charge on each capacitor was different. In series, the charge on each capacitor is the same. Now, voltage V... We know that Q equals CV. So the charge on here will equal C1V1. The charge on there will equal C2V2. And the charge on here will equal C3V3. Q equals CV. Now, Voltage across there is V1. Voltage across there is V2. Voltage across there is V3. The voltages add up. V1 plus V2 plus V3 must equal the supply voltage. V, the supply voltage, must equal V1 plus V2 plus V3. So... V equals Q over C. So if we think of Q as the charge on the single capacitor that will replace those, and C the value of the single capacitor, we get, well, V1 is Q over C1, 
V2 is Q over C2, and V3 is Q over C3. This is the total charge stored. This is the capacitance of our single capacitor that will be equal to those. And that's the voltage across the single capacitor and the total supply voltage. That equals the voltage across that, the voltage across that, plus the voltage across that. We add up the voltages, so we get V equals Q over C for the single capacitor, and that must equal that, adding up the voltages. So, we end up with Q over C equals Q brackets 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. We've taken the Q and put it outside the bracket. And we can therefore see immediately how nice, because if we divide both sides by Q, I get 1 over C equals, now divide that by Q, I get 1, it disappears, I get 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So, if I have got capacitors in series, to find out the value of the single capacitor that they are equal to, I have to use the one over style. One over the single capacitor equals one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3. And that may look a bit complicated, but it's not. If you think about values, Let's say C1 is, is 2 microfarads. Sorry, I don't think you can see my red thing. I'll do it in blue. C1 equals 2 microfarads. C2 equals, what should we say, 4 microfarads. And C3 equals... Mm, Let's make it also two micro, another one of two microfarads. So one over the big capacitor that will replace all of them will equal one over two plus one over four plus one over two, which is equal to a half plus a half is one plus a quarter, so that's one and a quarter, which is equals four to five over four micro. Farads. So the big capacitor will equal one and a quarter microfarads, and you notice it is smaller than any of the capacitors. So if I want to combine three capacitors to get a smaller value of capacitance, I combine them in series, and I'll get a smaller capacitance. Whereas if I combine them in parallel, I get a bigger capacitance. Now, this is the formula you need to remember capacitance in series 1 over the resulting capacitance equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. And I don't know whether you've learned about resistors in series and parallel because it's dead simple. Let's clean my wall. If you have learned about resistors in series and parallel, you will remember that for resistors, resistors in series add up. Capacitors in series, you get the one over business. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up, and that should be C. So, resistors in series behave like capacitors in parallel. And if we have resistors in parallel, we get the one over business. And if we have capacitors in parallel,
So, R in series. C in series. R in parallel. C in parallel. So all you need to do is remember that formulas for resistors and capacitances are the opposite way round. Resistors in series, you just add them up. Capacitors in parallel, you just add them up. Resistors in parallel, the one over R business. Capacitors in parallel, you just add them up. So resistors and capacitances, the formulas are opposite. And that makes it easy to remember. So look in your textbook for resistors in series and parallel and one or two worked examples and remember capacitors, they store energy. And one great joke, you know, I, my very first job was in the Royal Air Force in the electronics field with radar and things. And one of the great jokes among the soldiers, they would charge a capacitor and then just leave it there on the table like a coffee mug. And somebody not knowing would come along and pick up the capacitor and jump! they get a great big electric shock because the capacitor stored the energy by separation of charge. And when you touch the two terminals, you've got an electric shock. Very dangerous to do. Don't do it. Uh, good luck in all your studies. And that was a programme about capacitors. Cheerio.